in the end, it's all an air pump, right? You know, and we're just trying to light it off and keep it spinning. But um, there is a pretty fine line, a tuning window, it seems, in the car. Uh, it either hauls ass and, and, and you know, burns up some stuff or, or it, it doesn't go at all. So, uh, but I think we're getting closer to it. I'm always the eternal optimist with it. I believe in it, you know. I think the small block Chevy is, is a competitive engine and will continue to be competitive, but we got to step up our game. Yeah, we did break it really good in Bowling Green. You know, a lot of people thought we were done for the year. I think we're in good shape. We got a, you know, the motor's happy. It's living. We've taken it apart every run. We've got no damage inside. And the performance has definitely picked up. And even the tone of the motor has changed. And a lot of people have commented that, you know, it is sounding better. So now we just got to get that on the track and see what it does and perform for us. Conditions this weekend are actually pretty cool and nice, so we're going to look at some other racetracks we've been to. The track itself looks pretty decent. Uh, they've done some work to it since last year, so I think it's going to be a better racing surface. But uh, yeah, we, we have some good notes to pull from, and uh, hopefully we got enough good data and we can set it up and make some good laps. Coming into this race, we're the points leader, and the goal is to keep the keep it rolling, keep being the points leader, and win the race. Made two passes, got my license, and the third pass uh, went out to just try to better everything and uh, went 258, something like that. We, good mile an hour, car ran good, straight, and we're out here. We're going to be competitive today. I don't think he's going to be around another 38 years with me, but, uh, you know, he's, it's good to have him on board. There he is right there. He's leading us. He's, he's the one captaining this ship, that's for sure.
we've been changing all the little things. We've got something major wrong with the car that we have not been able to find. Because last year the car had run, you know, low 70s, high 60s without a lot of trouble. And we've been now uh, low 80s, high 90s is about all we've been get, able to get out of it. This weekend we changed the motor to a motor that we know, know what it ran and we ran a 63 with it. And um, uh, we're pretty comfortable and we should know the first run, frankly. Then we'll be more in the game because we've been chasing uh, Hills and they're running awful good. But uh, if we find a little issue we've got, I think we'll be right with them. Lines. Gary Vito waiting patiently at the Grand Prix Auto Parts Center entry. John Brick. Well, the small pump, you're limited to 20 gallons for the legal top fuel car. Um, so the cars are just naturally lean all the way through the run because of these new blowers are so efficient. Oh, especially when you're going a full quarter mile instead of just eighth mile like we do on the Nitro Chaos, the window for air is a whole lot smaller. These quarter mile cars with the legal pump, 20 gallon pumps on them, you don't have any room. If, you, if you're off on the tune-up, you're going to destroy the motor and melt pistons and everything else anyway. But uh, that's just the nature of the beast with these legal cars now. Uh, we were still a little soft at the 60 foot, but uh, there's some improvement to go there. But once it gets off the starting line, it starts to pull pretty good. And it was going down the track pretty nicely, and I'm just going along for the ride. I'm not really having to do too much correction as it's going down the track. And uh, I get a little over 1,000 feet, and I start seeing some green flames coming out of it. And I'm, like, looking at it, and you're having this whole conversation in your head, you know, that feels like it's 30 minutes but it's probably a millisecond but you're like is it still pulling is it not pulling so I get out of it and then I got mad at myself for getting out of it because I was like dummy it's still got power so I went back in it for another you know little second and finished it and I, I'm kind of mad because I think we would have ran a 70 with that uh, with it all the way to the end but I'm, I'm, I'm in no man's land because I, like we haven't gone that far in a while and we're starting to hit that and that's a really good sign that we can start finishing the quarter mile now. But uh, shit, we're there, you know. I mean, it feels good right now. I like starting out with Q2 at a 582. Uh, I don't think it'll hold for number one qualifier yet, but we have something to work on. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, definitely the better. Things slow down a little bit for you. Uh, it was first pretty good tire shake, I felt. So I still got all my teeth. Yeah, we, we got a few pistons on that run, but it, uh, 
we'll get back out there. I've never night driven. I I want to run between a wall of uh, header flames. See what that feels like. Maybe it'll help me go straighter. Considering the summer we had of making ashtrays, that was gorgeous. It felt great. I think part of that was just, again, we've had a bunch of leaker runs, so I'm a little catching up, if you will. We're happy with it. You know, we're back in the fives. That's a major step again. And it's not because the bad air is covering for a problem or so. We're, we'll take that. We'll run with that. Any particular fix? Jimmy's to do a little bit of jetting on it and uh, send it. Ten thousand two hundred, ten thousand three, almost ten three. There, it's about five seconds. Oops. Uh, yeah, it got a little sideways down there at a thousand feet, or maybe right before that. And there's a little bump down there, and uh, I was, I'd let the car drift over to the left a little bit already, and it turned sideways, so I was done. I quit. I mean, I didn't really feel the bump that bad. The car just turned sideways more, but looking at the computer, the motor went to ten three, so. It was definitely, you know, probably that bump that did it. And, uh, but yeah, the first run we planned to shut off. We put a new supercharger on the car. And it's, so we're having, we had to back way up and now we're trying to see where we're at. And it looks like we're okay. If we need to make the third qualifier tomorrow, we should be able to tune it up a little bit, but we'll probably try not to have to do it.
Braidwood, Illinois. Sheet metal worker by trade. The wife, Tammy Taylor, the crew chief, and uh, 209 Thornhill chassis for those teams out of the Chicagoland area. Atron Sleeves is the sponsor for that team. And, uh, we wish them the, the best for Mike Taylor. seven in qualifying but man I'm gonna tell you what that thing ate more than its Wheaties right there I guarantee you. its own way at the hit of the throttle and uh, we, we like the 60 foot it felt pretty strong all the way from 60 all the way to the finish line which was nice you know it's a nice for a change you know because we've been been hurting it up upstairs so it actually finished the quarter mile felt pretty strong 
Uh, happy to get back into the 70 Club again uh, after a while of being away from it. And uh, today's run, uh, we, we, uh, we, we changed a couple things to try them out and we dropped a bunch of cylinders on that run. And, and so when we drop cylinders like that, we lose a lot of the power and it, it just didn't run quite as good. It was lazy at the hit and, and it was lazy after half track when it started dropping cylinders and mixing it up. So I think we're gonna be okay. You know, we, we put our special magical uh, clutch together and everything else and we'll go out and hopefully it'll run another 70. We're, we're gonna need it towards the end of the night if we can stay in it that long, you know, we'll see. a couple of runs to figure out this racetrack and our normal combination we had to swap some stuff around to accommodate it but uh, we're pretty close to where we want to be we'll just take it around by round you go round by round by round you win races so we'll just give it give it our best shot here round by round and see where it all ends up You know, we got up there and staged. The uh, car was clean, nice little burnout. You could tell it was it was really happy. Uh, went up there and you know did a little old burnout. Got got staged up, pulled it to the high side. Everything was still clean. Me and Adam pretty much left together. I think he was like a 65, I was a 75, something like that. And I uh, I got to watch him about a car ahead of me. And we run down there about a thousand foot, and I saw a little puff, let off. Figured that the car was running a low six, you know, because he's been re running really good today. So uh, it did. It ran like a 617 like a 208 or 218 miles an hour or something like that so you know i'm excited it was exciting it's been a hell of a weekend to, to get to this point with a lot of little gremlins that's jumped up and you know kind of a sketchy track last night you know and so uh, to be able to race your way into the race on the uh, third qualifier man it's, it's pretty damn gratifying to, to get that done Stuff. We're getting ready for the Nitro Nationals, the all-new Nitro Nationals right here, Tulsa Raceway Park, and the incredible man who put it together, Bob McLennan. So great to see him and all the things he does. He's tuning on the number one qualified car here this afternoon as they will get ready to bring that out. Fuel cars are right around the corner. Hopefully you got a nice cold beer. Tip the beer girl. That's how she makes a living on tips. And get ready, fans. That's all I can say. Get ready. Hopefully you got a t-shirt.
Here they go, man. It is time for the Nitro Nationals to start getting tickets tonight! who had some type of liquid. I'm not sure if it was oil or what, but something came out and had a goldish color that, from my view. And here we go. They are fired up and ready right here in the left lane out of Cincinnati, Ohio. The Hilton family. They will be ready to take on Mike Taylor's Braidwood, Illinois face machine. Taylor and company to the water box. numbers all right 113 187 the reaction time taylor had it on the better half 106 Hat hilton goes 104 then they get to the 330 they're both might as well say almost identical a 68 and a 69 for uh taylor the eighth of a mile 391 one 392 four you want to talk about a drag race man 496 499 at the thousand foot mark
charge. The reaction times, you might as well say they were almost identical. 103, 104 for Murphy. 60 foot, Murphy found a little power right there. Started pulling at the 330, down to the eighth. He still had him by over a tenth. And 205 and a mile per hour at the thousand foot mark. Put him 226, 586, six for the win for Murphy and company. Young man, he's here. Young man, this car's four nuts. Gotta come off. I have uh, my dad on it. Yeah, we broke a lifter, so uh, other than that, the motor's fine, but it's a little mechanical hiccup, so we're going to change the motors and get after it. Um, you know, sometimes the, the heavy hitters have troubles. When we did the burnout, I knew Adam had trouble, something was wrong. It's... it's in one sense, I'm disappointed because I love racing, Adam. You know, they're, they're racer family to us. Um, but I must admit, part of me is just like, holy shit, this is the coolest thing since sliced bread, man. So we didn't hurt any parts. I ran it out a little farther than I probably should have. I should have lifted it half track, but it felt so strong. I just drove it out and then picked it about a thousand feet. So we're in good shape for the next guy. We'll lean on it a little bit more and see if we can pick it up a bit and. Um, just we'll, we'll throw the kitchen sink and everything we got at it and we'll borrow bag anything we need and, and I know we can get everything we need to get it done so we'll go up there and throw down and see what happens and uh, keep our fingers crossed and uh, at about a thousand feet I'll be hunkered down real low in that car in case she goes bang but it's going out the back door for sure shit Les that's not what we wanted you know so went in did the burnout snapped the throttle cable had no throttle hit it again after it, it stopped running just to see what was happening i could feel the pedal move but couldn't see the bell crank moving on the on the throttle and uh didn't want to hold roskowski up so i i put it in reverse backed it behind the line and shut it off and you know that's the way it goes you know it's like you go from hero to zero i'd rather be uh good on set on race day than actually uh good on uh qualifying day i just want to get in the show so going from number one qualifier that's great good performance on the car really happy with that but when you have something like that sneak up on you you're pissed for a really long time and and these guys put so much work into this car to have something like that fail on you it failed at the crimp of the throttle cable and uh shit you know what can i say it, it did show some promise, so it, not a lot, not by a bunch, but it was the numbers were richer than um, than Hilton's until we shut it off uh, a little bit. Um, we just threw a whole new combination in before the, this run. So that was the first run on it, so we changed every nozzle in the motor. <laughs> and uh, Jimmy Young uh, helped us out there. Uh, looks like it's show, showing some promise. So. They didn't get as much of a size. They didn't get to go very high on the RP on the hip. So, um, anyway, we'll work on it. It looks like we got a, we're not totally dead in the water yet. Look in the tray.
got his license uh, this Monday before the race came in the mail so it's been cool seeing him progress through the weekend and be able to end up in the final round against us so but we're just going to treat it like any other race no no special no special treatment on nothing <laughs> had to have a little fun you know but uh, even up there you know even though we knew we had the, the round it was ours almost you know you still mentally don't think of it like that. You think of it like any other race when someone's in the other lane. I do at least. So that was pretty interesting. You never know what will happen. You got to get up to the starting line first. We were we were thinking about not making the last round, but we struggled through it, put it together. Johnny decided to do it, and here we are. Finals. Tulsa.
And here we go. The Hilton family, the final call of the night right here. Tyler Hilton in the right lane. Mike Hilton, his uncle in the left lane. The young 32-year-old Tyler Hilton, the number two qualifier, went 5.798 to his uncle's 5.965 to qualify number five. They're going to roll him in now. They have him coming to the water box in the right side, hitting the throttle, letting you know why they big number one's on it. After all that smoke, but what a championship race. The style they put on. Thank you to Bob and all the fine people that put on the Nitro Nationals. Thank you to Todd, Martin, Keith Haney, owners of Tulsa Raceway Park. What a race, man. Look, you were only you were four flat at the eight. Was he was three eighty six at the eight. What was our sixty foot? Uh one oh three eight and we were one oh seven. Johnny wow. was full of shit. He said he's got everything down. Yeah. Hey. Three eighty six to the eight. Look at his sixty foot. He had a one oh three eight. Yeah. Foot. Oh, I slowed it down. <laughs> <Watch it. laughs> hey, hey. It didn't hurt a park the last run. Uh, I was surprised, man. I saw him for a while. That was that was like, whoa, okay. That car's got a lot of a lot of potential and he's doing great driving it, so it's got a lot of potential. So hopefully hopefully we get him to Bakersfield there next month. Because that's where we're going. <laughs> Another one down. Try to get them all done. Well Mike, you almost won. Yeah. We we're running an eighth mile. Did I beat him to the eighth yeah. mile? It was an eighth mile race. I should have bet him like best light or something. Maybe that would have rattled him, but he don't seem to rattle. Well, you you, you got to feel pretty good. You, you you know it's a financial. I don't feel good. I just burn all my stuff up. No, but I feel yeah, I'm. I, you're seeing me smile, and I ra rarely do that. Well, and you know, like you just said, it's a financial commitment, and a lot of guys spend a lot of money and not ever make to the final. Uh, here you are racing, you know, all Hilton family final. There you go. So we, so we are in the final. We made the final. That's good. I'll remember that this winter. <laughs> see you in Bakersfield. Uh, you might see me in the pits. I don't know. You remember? You never know. You never know. Ask Johnny. Ask Johnny. He's the one's gonna have to be fixing all this stuff. I have to go find some money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got a bottle in the trailer. Yeah. It's in the trailer. All right, guys. How many we won in a row? Oh, oh. 